Well, hey y'all, welcome back to the Texas Boys, our family story. I'm so glad that you joined me today. And today we're gonna to be talking about why I chose the storage solutions that I've chosen. So if that interests you and you're stocking up your pantry, grab some coffee or some tea, sit back and relax. We're gonna chat a little bit. So before I get into sharing with you my storage solutions that are working this time around, let me just back up and share with you some of my bulk storage mistakes of the past. So we have been doing this whole prepper-minded preparedness thing now for probably about 10 years. So when we started out our journey on preparedness, we did a lot of these five gallon buckets here um, and lids. So I just went to Home Depot and I got five gallon buckets and I got these black snap-on lids and, um, and then we invested in Mylar bags and I put all of our bulk foods into the Mylar bags so it was not touching the plastic bucket and then we sealed them up tight and I got these lids so this way they could pop on and off more easily. And we had these stacked really, really deep in our garage in the past. Little by little, we would go through them and then I would move the food from the garage into the house. And then from there, I would have different um, totes and containers to store the food until it got to the kitchen to be used. So let's talk about some of the problems that I faced with the use of the five gallon storage buckets and then why I am trying not to go that route right now immediately with our food storage and hang tight with me don't get discouraged i'm going to explain myself and we'll make it all make sense here soon but the five gallon storage buckets whether you're doing food grade storage buckets with these gamma seal um, lids or if you're going the cheaper route like i did in the past of just getting the um, home depot buckets and then getting some type of lid to put on top of them, storing your food in Mylar bags. However you're deciding to store your food, these five gallon buckets are great. They serve the purpose, they do work well. You do have to label your stuff so that way you know what you have. Um, some of the drawbacks that I faced with them is that they're really heavy. Um, and if you um, are storing them, if you're storing them, you're probably storing them so that you're stacking them. Unless if you have just a ton of space and you can keep them single layer, at some point you'll probably start stacking them like we did in the past. And then what you'll have is you'll have stacks, probably really tall, of five gallon buckets and you'll have a label on the front of it or somewhere where you can see what is actually in that bucket. When it comes time to get that food, you have to pull them down and you have to haul your buckets around and um, you never really know exactly how much food is in those buckets. Um, this was my problem in the past anyway. You open up your Mylar bag and now it's open. Now you have to reseal the bag. Um, if you didn't invest in the more expensive um, seals, um, seal bags, then you have to get out your iron or whatever and reseal that bag. Or you can do like I did many a times is that if I was using some of the ingredients in the bucket, I cut the Mylar bag open and then just fold it down and put the lid on it and just kind of pray that the food would stay good and everything. So it wasn't a total fail in the past. Like I said, we lived on our food stores for many years and um, it was a blessing and it really did work out. It's just that this time around, knowing what I know now, I didn't want to go back immediately to the bucket system. I wanted to be able to start slowly build my food stores up, and eventually, yes, eventually, yes, we will have buckets maybe in the garage or somewhere like that where we will have bulk overflow of food. But for right now, I wanted to have a bulk food supply, a simple pantry that I could manage from right here in my house, something that was visual that I could see. I love the idea of having something that was clear um, so I could just look at it and see through it. You know, with all the new storage solutions that you see, um, on Instagram or all the different places. They're all about clear, having clear containers. You can just visually look at it. You know where you're at. You know how much popcorn you have. You know when to order it. So I'm all about being efficient with my time and my energy. 
So you can see one of the problems that happened with these old storage buckets is that when you stack them and then you pull them down and then you stack them back up, what happens over time is that the lids bust and the lids crack and they break and all of that. And then I've already talked about the drawbacks to the Mylar bags, having to reseal them and everything like that. Um, and then if you don't do all of that perfect, um, you're going to lose food to pests. Um, and we did have experience that we had some Indian meal moths get into our food and um, yeah, we, we did end up losing some food eventually over the years because you just couldn't keep it perfectly in these five gallon buckets. We were accessing the food and then keeping it in the bucket. So if you're going to use buckets, I would recommend that use these for your box storage, but use smaller containers that you can rotate this out. One of my big drawbacks um, and fails and mistakes of the past was that I did not have a good enough rotation system. I did have a rotation system, but it wasn't a good enough rotation system that it was really easy for me to manage. Like I said, I would bring the food in from the um, garage with the five gallon buckets, put it into big totes, and then those totes I would have in an empty storage closet and they were stacked. And then I found the same problems with the totes, even though they were clear and I could see through them, um, the problem was that totes weren't really meant to hold food in. So again, you have that problem with the different plastics and then you also have um, these totes weren't really meant to hold heavy, heavy, um, stuff like that and just be managed. Eventually the totes, the lids would break and snap and crack and then you're out a lot of money that you invested. Just saying all that to say why I chose the system that I chose this time. Will I eventually have storage buckets? Yes, probably so, but I'll be using them in a different way and they will be for overflow. They're not gonna be for my immediate inventory that I have in the house. Another mistake that I made in the past was buying random bulk food. And when I say random bulk food, you know, one of the number one prepper things that they say is only buy the bulk foods that you're actually going to eat or that your family actually enjoys, right? Don't, there's no sense in buying a bunch of bulk food that you're never going to eat because then you just end up throwing it all away. So I didn't fall into that trap, but what I did fall into the trap of was um, just buying foods that I didn't really have exact recipes for. So I didn't really know um, how much rice I was gonna eat. I didn't really know um, how I was gonna integrate all of these different bulk foods into our meals. So I was just kind of going at it really haphazardly. If I could encourage you on one thing, it would be don't be random, be very purposeful. And that's why I'm saying get a binder, make a list, simplify your meals, simplify your foods, get back to a one ingredient food um, system if you can. Get, it, get back to a one ingredient, get, in, get back to a one ingredient meal plan, if at all possible for your family, and start to work from there and see what foods do you actually need, what foods are gonna optimize the health of your family. If you're living on food stores, you want to be feeding your family the best of the best. If times are stressful, if you're um, stuck in the house, if there's job loss, if anything bad happens, a bad scenario happens where you are hunkered down for a little while and eating out of food stores, the last thing you wanna be doing is eating um, nutrition deficient food. You wanna be eating foods that are really, really gonna take care of your health. So let me just go ahead and show you really quick the food storage that I chose again and let me just explain to you a little more in depth of why I chose the food storage that I did this time around. So as you can see here, these food storage containers that I chose, I looked at several, several different options. I also found some big barrel, um, like bakery style food containers um, that I almost bought. They were white, they were really cool looking, and they had like a wooden um, wheel system on the bottom where uh, it was like a big white plastic barrel and, um, and you could wheel them around what you would see like in a bakery type thing or something like that. And I thought they were really cool too. The only reason that I didn't go with them is Number one, they weren't see-through. So I wasn't, in order to take inventory if I'm making a list or quick, I had a couple minutes, I just wanted to write down what I was gonna need. Um, 
I'd have to go and open up each barrel and then check it and see what was actually inside and where we were at. So that was number one. They weren't clear. I couldn't see through them. And the second thing is, y'all, I am not a tall person. So when you get a big barrel like this, when you get down to the bottom of it, I'm probably not even gonna be able to reach inside the barrel. Um, some other ideas that I was thinking about for food storage was just metal trash cans. And you could still do this and it would actually be kind of cool, but you know, just the um, metal basic trash cans that you can get like at Tractor Supply. Um, I don't know if Walmart still sells them or not, but you could even put them, you could have, um, someone even build you little wheels or something caster wheels to put onto them if you wanted to but um but those metal trash cans i was thought about putting them underneath there but the same thing i'd have to physically open them up to see what was inside of them so the thing that i really liked about these were first of all the price was right um, they come in at about 25 dollars each they're very lightweight very easy to move around when i'm baking or doing something in the kitchen um, it's very easy to pull it right out. Um, these are nice little um, clamp lids. They're bug resistant. Um, of course, they're mice resistant. Now, if you're storing these out in a garage somewhere, I'm not gonna say 100% that bugs or mice 100% couldn't get in them, but they definitely are advertised on the website um, on Amazon and I got these ones on Chewy, but I have linked for you on Amazon the exact same ones for the same price. Um, so it's super convenient if you're looking for these. But I also liked that this bottom holds 25 pounds and then this top holds another 10 pounds. So we're at 35 pounds. And I just thought that was a good manageable amount of bulk food to for me to manage to just kind of get my feet back wet again get back into the prepper mode again and not i i couldn't commit i couldn't wrap my mind around having big giant five gallon buckets and just storing mass amounts of food and knowing what i know now knowing that i'd have to have a really really good system in place to manage all that food in order to rotate it and not waste it so like I said, I really like these because they were lightweight. They're very easy to move around. The top I'm using as my rotation. So in the bottom is my bulk. And then um, as the food gets used, it goes into the top. So I'm always working out of the top and it's always in a constant rotation. They're clear. I can see my inventory. I just really, really liked this option a lot. So if you have any better ideas, please link them below for me because I would definitely be open to other ideas, but I just really liked these as soon as I saw them. And if you go on to Chewy, if you're looking for BPA free like these are, um, plastic or a way to store your food, they also have lots of other different options. I am not paid by Chewy at all, but I know it's hard to find things these days and I know that um, buckets and things like that can get really pricey if you're buying stuff. So. Um, Go on to Chewy, they have some really nice um, BPA-free storage containers. If you have shelving units or other things, um, you know, places that you have to store food, you can go ahead and just get all different types of options on there. And they have the Gamma Seal lids and all the different things, so it's pretty cool. Um, but I just thought these worked best for us. And so another thing that I really liked about this option for me personally is that unlike before before we had a huge house we had a huge garage we had lots of unlimited space to store food in this house we have very limited space to store food so what i liked about these storage containers is the fact that these are movable they are portable very easily i can put them underneath my kitchen table i can put them in my spare room and pull them out as i need them and it gets all of this food out of my pantry it's a huge amount of food i mean just today i was in the pantry and my son came in there and he said wow i remember when this whole pantry was all filled with food and now it's not there's just some basic things in there that we're keeping but it's not full of bulk food bulk food takes up a 
huge amount of space and storage and I don't have a huge amount of space and storage in this little farmhouse. So this was just an awesome way to get all of those bulk goods out of my pantry and leave room in my pantry for some other things. One thing that I found this time around is that I want to make efficient use of my space. I have to make efficient use of my space. Um, maybe in a future video I can chat with you about freezer space and how I've managed my freezer space, how I've minimized what I have in my freezer and now each shelf is dedicated to one certain thing and all of those other things and all those extras that used to be in my freezer. I've downgraded, I've gotten rid of all the extras. We just have like three specific things that go into our back freezer and that's it. And for that reason, I guess that's the same train of thought as what I'm using in my pantry storage these days is that I just wanna have specific certain things that go into there. I don't wanna be putting everything in my pantry. So, so these fit really nicely underneath of my kitchen table and these might work for a good option for you as well. If you have a spare room, a closet, somewhere like that that you could wheel these into, um, I really just can't say enough good about these. I've really, really enjoyed having them. Make sure before you put your dry bulk foods into these containers, as soon as your bulk foods come into your house, you want to spend a couple days, rotate your bulk foods into your freezer and put them in the freezer for at least 24 hours to try to kill off any pests or anything like that that might be in your rice, your oats, any of your bulk grains, seeds, things like that, go ahead, throw it in your freezer first. Trust me, you will be thankful later when you don't have to deal with bugs that end up growing in your bulk food supply. Another thing that I found this time around that I prefer to do, it's not what I can always do, but I'm shopping out everything, like I said again, like price per pound or price per ounce. And you'll be surprised sometimes um, you will find a better deal at your little local, um, this is called Natural Grocer. It's just a little local uh, mom and pop kind of place. They have a way better deal, a way, way, way better deal on these natural. Um. So one of the things that I did this time around, as you all know, is that I'm shopping out everything price per pound or price per ounce, however you want to say it. And um, really do that, take your time and do that because sometimes it works out better to buy in bulk in big 50 pound bags and other times it, you make out way better, like five to 10 times better when you just find a great deal at a little local place or even on Amazon or Walmart or anywhere. Um, sometimes it does pay to get stuff in smaller quantities. So the thing that I prefer, if I could find stuff in smaller quantities, to me, this is already sealed. It's a double protection. So it's not like I just have loose coconut flakes in here or loose rice or beans sitting in here. If you have to do that, fine. But I would recommend, if at all possible, especially in your, um, your food that you're working from, your top container, go ahead and put that in a gallon size freezer bag. Have double protections in place against bugs and pests and all that kind of thing. And that's what I'm doing with most of my food is if at all possible, I'll try to buy stuff that's already pre-bagged and just put it into these containers already in their bags or in their boxes. And if it doesn't come like that, I would just go ahead and take your time and put it into gallon size freezer bags or put it into something else that it's doubled up on your protection against pets, pests and that type of thing. So here's a great idea for rotation. So this time around, what I'm doing when I rotate in my bulk foods is that I'm putting it in these really nice storage containers. I will link these below to you. You put them into these nice little storage containers. You can grab them really easily. They're labeled. They have pour spouts. And it's just, again, really easy to rotate my bulk foods. It's visual, it's clear, I can see the inventory, I see what I need to buy, and it's very, very manageable. It's also pest resistant, bug resistant, airtight, all of that. So I'll go ahead and link them below for you and see if that works for you, um, just for a way to manage and rotate your bulk foods. 
So anyway, y'all, I just wanted to share that with you of why I chose what I chose, what I did in the past, what worked, what didn't work, and just put that information out there and let you do what you want with it. So I hope this video helped you in some way. I hope you have a blessed day and we love you all so much. Thank you for stopping by. Be sure to check out our next video. I'm gonna be sharing with you all of our bulk staple foods and sweeteners. So you won't wanna miss that video. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Who can't live without your bulk staple foods and sweeteners? All right, y'all, have a blessed day. Thanks so much for hanging out. We'll see you next time. Bye from the Texas Boys.